Okay, so we're going to look at the Cauchy problem for the heat equation. So this is the usual heat PDE and some initial conditions, which we're not going to specify yet, given by phi. <coughs> and uh, we're going to allow the, the spatial region to be all of R, uh, and looking at positive time, of course. And so we're, there's no real boundary here, so, so no boundary conditions. And that's more or less what the Cauchy problem is. So... Um, uh, in in general, the the meaning of of Cauchy problem uh, means so we've got some PDE and and we've got some um, boundary condition of of some type and uh, <coughs> this is going to be then. Um, for for values y in a hypersurface, which uh, sounds fancy but doesn't really mean all that much. Um, the idea is you just want a, a surface of one dimension less than your space. So, for example, uh, if we're in R two. then a hypersurface would uh, just be some uh, maybe curve like this that divides the, uh, the, the plane into a top half and a bottom half, both unbounded. And so psi here is uh, going to be some function um, with non-vanishing gradient, and we'll say this is, say, the level curve of where psi is equal to 0 or something. So that might be where, how you specify um, a hypersurface. Um, if you're in R3, R3 is, uh, well, three-dimensional. So a hypersurface is going to be two-dimensional. And so you'd, again, have some, some function. And you might say, OK, let's look at a level curve of it, maybe this one right here. So this is where say, psi is equal to 0. And then you would solve the differential equation on one side of that surface um, or the other. So, so the idea is hypersurface is defined by where this is equal to zero uh, for some nice function psi. Maybe nice means that um, uh, the gradient of psi is, is never zero. OK. Um, <clears throat> and, and so there's no real boundary other than this hypersurface. Uh, and so there's no initial conditions, or sorry, no boundary conditions. We'll think of what's given on the hypersurface as an initial condition. Um, <clears throat> sometimes uh, we might require you to be um, bounded at infinity or uh, vanish at infinity, or something like that. So some sort of condition at infinity that might make uh, physically reasonable sense. Um, so let's see. So <clears throat> that's, that's just in general for the Cauchy problem. So let's return to what we're looking at right now. So we're going to solve the Cauchy problem for the heat equation uh, on the positive half plane. And from uh, the intermezzo that I posted on Canvas, um, we know that uh, we can solve the Cauchy problem for some initial conditions phi once we have the fundamental solution. Right? And so we need to solve the problem that looks like uh, the heat PDE uh, subject to u of x0 being the Dirac delta. Um, at zero. And 
to find this, um, <clears throat> we can uh, we solve the um, heat equation. with u of x zero being the unit step function where the cutoff is at zero. So so this so uh, u zero of x, this is the heavy side or unit step function. Uh, where the jump is at zero. And the reason why it works is because if w solves uh, this latter equation then WX um, is the fundamental solution so in other words I I'm just saying that it it, uh, it solves this one back here and so to see that um, notice that if we have uh, so if if uh, w is a solution for the one with the the uh, unit step function, then if we look at wx and we plug it into the heat equation, so applying the heat equation to it, we differentiate it and then subtract k times um, its second space derivative, right? Um, well. Since this is a linear equation, uh, I can reorder the derivatives however I like. And so then this one looks like ddx of uh, wt minus kwxx. But since we chose uh, w to solve uh, that heat equation, this gives us. Uh, ddx of 0, which is 0. That did not look like a del. There we go. Um, <clears throat> so wx will also be a solution of the, the heat equation. And furthermore, um, <clears throat> since we have that uh, wx this is uh, ddx of the uh, heavy side function. So that will be our Dirac mass. OK, so that's the game plan. We're going to solve this problem by first solving this guy right here, then differentiating to find the fundamental solution, and then doing a convolution against the fundamental solution in order to figure out what it would look like for a generic boundary condition fee.